So if you're struggling with hill shots all the time, maybe you're hitting those hill shots which are going spinning, going out to the right, quite weak shots, or maybe even a shank. In this video, I'm gonna tell you three reasons to why you're doing that, three things that cause you to hit the ball out the hill, and of course, exactly how to fix them. So I'm Jonathan from Channel with J Chan Golf. Let's dive right into it. So the first reason I see players routinely hit the ball out the hill because of, and that is them having an excessive out to win path in the downswing. So where they are passing through the golf ball, extremely out to win to where the hosel of the club, or maybe the heel is reaching the golf ball first. They're always in that danger shank zone. So most common reason why I see people do this, swing so much from the outside, is because their upper body is far too overactive in transition. They'll really rotate their upper body too much too early. Like you know from my channel, rotation is very good, but we don't want to do it out of sequence. We don't want the upper body to rotate far too much too early because that club is going to get thrown right out in front of us and you are going to hit a massive hosley or necky type of shot there. So what we need to do, we need to make sure we are calming down the upper body in transition. We don't want the upper body to rotate too fast first. We want the lower body and mid-torso to turn first and the upper body be passive and follow it. It needs to trail that movement there. So let's talk about how to do that. So like we said, to not hit that hill strike from the excessive path going through the ball, we need the upper body to be more passive in transition and not massively rotate too much first. So how are we gonna do this? With this right here. So this is called the swing plate. So this is pretty much alignment stick out of a plate that you can extend and do what you want with if you have the extension pole. So why this is here? Because if I get too overactive, I'm gonna smash into it if I really rotate my upper body too hard. So me just swinging underneath this stick in its simple form as it is, my club is gonna be traveling on a better path. I'm gonna have less of a chance of hitting the ball out the hill if this is your problem for it. So just doing that alone, yes, that will work great if I hit one. I'm not really gonna hit it out the hill. Again, that's my problem. But we could make it even more intentful than that. We could be thinking of having a passive upper body in transition. How are we gonna do that though? We're gonna feel the top of our swing into the downswing that let's say the zipper on my body warmer here is pointing at you for as long as possible. So if you're someone who really struggles with that overactive upper body, this will calm it down. This will let lower body mid torso go and lead. And then that's gonna naturally create the path. Then you'll have no problem with almost hitting this. So gilet pointing at you for as long as possible. My chest won't be here at impact. So that'll be impossible. You will start moving it around with your body. It'll just happen in a better sequence and a better path. So the next reason I see players hitting off the hill is their right heel lifting up too early in the downswing, excessively lifting. So if I start my downswing and I drive my right heel up, and I know a lot of you are trying to do this, push off your trail leg. So if I do that, what happens? How does that cause me to hit it off the hill? Well, you've got to understand if I lift up that right heel, what's moving towards the golf ball? The right knee is naturally then gonna to move towards the golf ball. Okay, what's really attached to that? The hip. The hip's gonna to move towards the golf ball. And of course, what else is attached to my right hip? The right hand side of my body is. So if the right heel lifts up, the knee moves forward, the hip moves forward, the right hand side of the body moves forward. What else is attached to that? My right arm, what am I holding on to? The golf club. So my club is gonna travel outside the ball line. It's gonna push the club forward. It's moving everything forward. The club will too, because like I said, funnily enough, we're holding on to the golf club with our body. So that will cause us to hit it out of the heel. We don't want to be driving this foot up. We don't need to do that. We do see some tour players do it. Justin Thomas is a good example, but you've got to understand when he's doing that, he's counteracting it with another move. He is adding in an excessive amount of early right side bend because that will get his club traveling more on path, doing that movement, negating the effect of that right hand side moving towards the golf ball. But very athletic guy, one of the best players in the world, was the best player in the world at one time. He can add that in with a good amount of rotation. 
he can make that functionally work. Most of you, I'd actually guarantee all of you, would not be able to make that work. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that this right heel is staying a little bit more down on the ground for longer. We would prefer to see what's called that foot banking over, where you can see the red part of my shoe here, not lifting up, it's rolling. This isn't something you need to think here, this is just what's happening and then turning through. But you can see the right foot is staying, or the right heel staying on the ground for longer. That is not gonna cause my right hand side of the body to push out this way. So that's gonna keep the club traveling through that ball line nicely, controlling my strike location. Drill, let's do it. So the drill, swing plate again, of course. So what we can do with this, this is actually one of my favorite drills. This is very simplistic of a drill too. I really like it, but very hard, very hard. I don't struggle with this in my golf swing and I find this drill really, really mentally challenging. It's quite intimidating of a drill when you set up to it. So what you can see here, even though like we said, yes, it's the heel that lifts up being the problem, but like we said, the knee is the first thing that starts to move forward because of it and then the rest of the body as a result. So if I have this here, and as you can see, if I lift up that heel, I'm kneeing this every single time. So you can obviously see, just like before, I'm trying to miss it with the club, with the outer sequence turn. We just want to miss this and not have our knee hit it. So I usually have probably about side hands distance between my knee and the stick. And I essentially just hit the ball without hitting the stick. My body will figure out. I don't need to think about the, bit, the banking. Like I said, the body will figure it out. It will do it. So let's just miss this with our knee. There we go. We will not be struggling with hitting it out the heel again, if that's our problem. So getting a decent amount of reps for these, a lot of you who are struggling with heel shots, this will be the problem. And hit it a little bit out more at the middle. So the third most common reason to why I see players hit the ball out of the heel routinely is the trail arm extending as we're coming into impact. So again, this is something a lot of you are trying to do. You're trying to feel like that right arm is straightening coming into the golf ball. Because a lot of times that's taught to get a bit of power by extending the trail arm, scarily enough. So what we're gonna see by that, of course, if we're moving down in good posture and I straighten this right arm coming into the golf ball, look what happens to the club. It diverges straight out. It goes on the outside of the ball line. What's that gonna hit? The heel, maybe a shank shot at worst. I see a lot of players shank the ball because of this, lots and lots. So we don't want that to happen, one, that's going to completely stall out our rotation. If we're trying to physically straighten that arm coming through the golf ball, our rotation would have to stop to be able to do that. So funnily enough, if you're trying to do that for more power, you're going to hit it weaker. Not what you want to be doing, slowing down dynamic movement. We want to be keeping this trail arm bent coming through the golf ball. Because you've got to remember, we're hitting a golf ball on the ground, we're rotating to that golf ball, golf's rotational sport. To be able to do that, we need to be side bending at the moment of impact. If we're side bending to be able to hit that ball, we can't have an extended tra trail arm. We need it to be bent there. So if it's bent, we're gonna be hitting ball out the middle of the club face, if this is our problem. So we need that right arm to stay a little bit more bent. Going through impact, it's gonna help us for a better strike. So let's get the drill going. So this drill is the drill of three names, which is what I call it. Could be called Tommy Fleetwood drill, could be called bent right arm drill, could be called the no throw drill, the exact same thing. So what we do with this, we essentially keep our right arm bent all the way through to the finish. Now, like I say, when always I talk about this drill on my channel, do we want the right arm to be bent at the finish in a normal swing? No, we don't. We want the right arm to straighten post impact as we get into round shaft parallel to the ground. But if we're doing a drill to combat straightening the right arm at impact, which is hitting it out the heel for us, we don't want to be doing the ideal move because guess what? Your body is already trying to do the ideal move. So we need to extreme it the other way. We need to make sure we're doing over exaggerating it almost to a fault to some extent the other way to get our body to be able to realize what's going on we know feel is not real in the golf swing. We have to exaggerate it. Feel versus real is such a massive thing. We need to feel like we're keeping that right arm bent all the way to our finish as a drill, and that will keep us in that nice spot. Because you can imagine, if your right arm's bent here at your finish, of course, it's gonna be bent at the golf ball. You're not gonna have it straight and then rebend it coming through the finish. It's just not gonna happen. It'd be quite funny 
if it is. If it, if it is, someone send me a swing of them doing that on Instagram. That'll be quite funny. So, what we need to do, let's do a slow-mo, right arm bent all the way through. So you can see here on my finish, if I turn around, right arm is bent. So if we do that, we are then going to control our strike location. If this finger is the ball, if my right arm straightens, pushes the club outside the ball line, if my right arm is staying bent, I can keep in my dynamic posture better. That is then going to be controlling sweet spot far easier, far, far easier. So first drill without anything other than your body, so everyone can do this. But with the other ones, if you want to grab a swing plate, I have a discount code for that, JCHAM Golf in lowercase. Type that into checkout to get 10% off at swingplate.com, theswingplate.com. You'll be able to pick one of them up. So, really from here, you won't be doing all of these. I'll be impressed. You've probably stopped playing golf already if you're doing all three of these because you would have the most crazy wear marks right here. You'd probably be playing with offset clubs and those probably wouldn't even be doing the job. So. One of these will suit you nicely. Absolutely, is there more reasons for out the heel? Of course, but these are the most common ones. So if you found this video helpful, of course, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button. Of course, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So if you manage to do this a little bit better, you're gonna hit the ball out the middle and you're gonna enjoy golf again.